If you want to prepare for coding interviews, you can go to LeetCode and practice hundreds of interview style problems. But when it comes to system design, it's very hard to know which problems to focus on. In this video, I'll give you top 10 most asked system design problems. I'll also give you resources where you can find their solutions. Let's do this. At number 10, we have the design of a hotel booking system like Airbnb. There are many different functional requirements of a hotel booking system. If you look closely at the user journey, you will find that at minimum, a user should be able to search for a hotel and then book it. On the other hand, a hotel owner should be able to put their hotel on the website and specify how many rooms are available and the details of these rooms. Here are a few questions you need to answer when designing a system like this. How would you make sure that rooms are not double booked? How do you put hold on the rooms that are currently being booked? How would you enable fast searches? Check out the article I linked in the description to find answers to these questions. At number 9, we have web crawler design. Have you ever wondered how Google is able to get so much information from the internet so fast? Google has a database of all the web pages on the internet. This database is called a web index. The index stores the details about the content of each web page such as keywords, titles and links. Google uses this index to quickly retrieve the results when user enters a query. But here's the catch. New web pages get added to internet every single day. To keep the index up to date, Google uses a web crawler. Web crawler is an automated program that systematically browses the internet, visits web pages and collects information to create an index. But designing a good crawler can be very challenging. You have to deal with duplicate web pages because they can waste a lot of your resources. You also have to set right cadence for crawling because if you crawl too often, you might end up overwhelming the websites. You also have to get the permission of the website owner before you crawl their website. You can learn how a web crawler works in the linked article. Before we move on, I want to make sure that you know that system design interview is only one of five or six interviews that you will go through. There are other interviews like coding interviews, behavioral interviews and hiring manager interviews that are equally important. If you want to know how to crush all these different kinds of interviews, you can sign up for my free email crash course at interviewmaster.io. Anyway, let's continue with the video. Next we have a proximity service. Whenever you need to answer, find the nearest X to me, you should think about a proximity service. If the X here is a cab, you have Uber. If the X is restaurants, you have Google Restaurant Search or Yelp. How to retrieve the nearest cabs or restaurants really fast? That's the biggest challenge when designing a proximity service. In the case of restaurants, their position is fixed, but the cabs in Uber keep moving. This adds an extra layer of complexity when designing Uber. To find the nearest cabs or restaurants really fast, you need to keep them in a special data structure. If you know the name of this data structure, Leave your answer in the comments. Solution for proximity service is also linked below. At number 7, we have online document editor like Google Docs. The functional requirements of Google Docs are very interesting. Multiple users should be able to edit the same document simultaneously. If the users edit the same portion of the document, the system should be able to resolve the conflicts. Here are a few questions that you need to answer for this kind of system. What kind of connection should the client have with the servers? Is a one-way connection enough or you need a two-way connection to see the edits? If two users users edit or delete the same character in the document, how would you resolve the conflict? Do you need a lock to do this or are there any non-blocking ways? Read the linked article to find answers to all these questions. Next we have the design of a messaging app like WhatsApp. Let's forget images and videos for now. The basic functionality here is quite simple. User sends the message to someone. The message reaches the server. What happens next? Does the server forward this message to the recipient or should it wait for the recipient to ask for their message? In other words, do you always maintain a bi-directional connection with all your users or only give messages when asked for? What happens if two users send messages to each other at the same time? Which timestamp should the server use for a message? The time at which user sent it or time at which the server received it. All the messages from billions of users cannot be stored in one machine. How would you partition the data and improve performance of this system? Read the linked solution to learn more. At number 5, we have type head or autocomplete feature. When you go to Google and start typing a query, Google autocompletes this query for you. How does Google do it? And that too in milliseconds. For this, Google keeps a count of all the queries that have happened on Google. Google updates the count as the new queries come in. When the user is typing a new query, Google does a string match with all the queries in the database and returns the queries that have been searched the most. But doing a database lookup would take a lot of time. Is there a data structure that can be stored in memory and can do this really fast? Even if the data structure is stored in memory, you still need to persist the data in the database. How would you partition this database to be able to rebuild the data structure quickly? Read the linked article 
difficult to find all the answers. Next, we have a video streaming service like Netflix or YouTube. What are the functional requirements of such services? First, users should be able to stream and share videos. For a social media service like YouTube, the user should also be able to upload the videos. And then, there is searching and commenting as well. I'm skipping live streaming here because that would make it very complicated. What are some tricky parts of designing a video streaming service? The most obvious challenge is that videos are very big in size. So they take a lot of bandwidth and storage. You would need to compress and decompress videos on server side and client side. Additionally, you would have to break the video down into smaller chunks to make it easier to handle. Chunking also helps with deduplicating videos on YouTube. Check out the article I linked to learn more about these problems and their solutions. At number 3, we have a file sharing service like Dropbox. You will see some similarities between file sharing and video streaming because both involve sharing large files over the internet. What makes Dropbox even more interesting is that you need to give users the ability to edit files. How would you track which files have changed? You need to have some sort of listener or watcher that constantly monitors the shared directory. Not only that, you also need to know which exact part or chunk of the file has changed because you don't want to upload the entire file just because some small part has changed. For an in-depth understanding of Dropbox design, read this article. At number 2, we have the design of a social media app like Facebook or Instagram. If you forget videos or reels for a moment, the basic functionality of social media apps is quite straightforward. Users should be able to upload their photos along with some text. They should be able to see the photos from their friends in the newsfeed. They can also like and comment on these posts. If that is clear to you, let's see what makes this design challenging. Have you ever noticed that your newsfeed has a very low latency? You constantly see photos that were posted just now. If you had to query a database every time you wanted to build a news feed, your news feed will be very slow. So you'll have to figure out a way to keep the news feed in memory. Even with that, how do you make sure that users can see the photos that were posted just now? Should you do a fan out to all the followers every time a picture is posted? If your answer is yes, what happens in the case a celebrity posts a picture? Read this article to find the answers to all these questions. At the very top, we have the most asked system design problem of all time, and that is Tiny URL. This is a very special problem because at the surface, it looks pretty simple. You are given a long URL and you need to return a short URL that redirects to the long URL. It feels like you just need a key value store where the key is the short URL and the value is the long URL. But how do you generate this short URL? Most people would apply some sort of hashing function to the long URL to get a short URL. But as the number of URLs increase, so would the hash collisions. How do you avoid hash collisions? Well. One way to do it would be to generate the short URLs beforehand and whenever you get a new long URL, you can assign it a pre-generated short URL. But what if multiple servers ask for a short URL at the same time? How do you avoid assigning same short URL to multiple long URLs? All these questions are answered in this article. By the way, if you want to crush your next technical interview, do not forget to sign up for my free email crash course at interviewmaster.io. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.